Yep, it's that time. So welcome back everybody to the channel. We are finally, after a lot of teasing, gonna be doing the tandem gun build with the ugh, car build. You know, it's weird. I, I've really struggled on how I wanted to do these videos. Like I didn't know like how, what order I should do them in. And then sometimes parts arrive and then like the wheels, for example, still haven't arrived for the car. And then finally the upper that we're using for this build has arrived. And this was the last part of the gun build that I was waiting on. So I figured, hey, let's just start it. Like there's no need to have a particular order to this series. We're building an AR pistol, but not any kind of AR pistol, which you'll find out here in a minute there is some stuff that is very special about this upper and the ar pistol in general that we're building we're gonna make the theme of this build match my 2019 civic type r that we're also going to be building before we go over the gun parts and talk about the car a little bit i kind of wanted to give you guys a little heads up on how this video series is going to be structured a little bit so i created don't fall so I created a new channel called Torque Toolbox. I will throw a link down in the description below if you wanna go subscribe there. I don't know if there's videos there now or not. At the moment of recording this video, there's no videos there, but there might be at this point in time. I've kind of briefly mentioned it in previous videos. It's almost at 2000 subscribers with no videos. So thank you guys so much for going over there and you know being a part of this series with me. The way I wanna structure this is a little bit different than other stuff. So for the AR build, we're gonna do everything 100% AR build here on this channel. We're gonna break it up into segments. You know, we're gonna talk about the lowers, we're gonna talk about the uppers, you know, the parts that we're gonna be using with it. And because YouTube doesn't allow us to do instructional videos or tutorial videos anymore, for the tutorials, I'll tell you in the videos, but you'll just have to follow the link in the description to go to another page where you can watch, you know, how to build the lowers and how to install these parts. Because like I said, this AR is gonna be a little bit different than anything else that pretty much anybody's built on YouTube. Um, it's not crazy different. I'm sure somebody's built one, but nobody that I know of. There's gonna be some crossover content from the car onto this channel, but there's not gonna be any gun crossover onto the car channel. But nonetheless, there will be some car stuff on this channel. And every time I upload a new video about this gun, I'm gonna tell you what I'm working on with the car. And then if you wanna watch more about that, you have to go to the second channel to get all the information about it. The main reason for this is twofold. Number one, I wanna keep that channel as squeaky clean as I can so I can avoid any types of strikes, demonetizations, stuff like that, at least for that channel. And then the second reason is for brands such as car companies that don't even deal in the outdoors market or the firearms market, a lot of companies, they kind of clench their booty holes a little bit when they find out that you kind of want to put them with gun content. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are asking, well, why the heck did you buy a Honda Civic Type R? And don't worry, we're going to cover that here in a minute because I promise you, you're probably looking at the car and thinking, wow, what a ricer, wow. It's just a Honda. Trust me, you were wrong. I was wrong. I didn't want to buy it. When I first heard about it, I was like, oh great, another front wheel drive Honda. But we'll cover that in a minute. But first, let's talk about some of the parts that we're going to be using on this build. Um, we might even drive the car around. I'll give you kind of some first impressions of it. Tell you guys that don't know about the Civic Type R and why it's special. But first, let's get into the gun part. So the first part, this is the Brownells BRN 180S. Now this is an old design that was made modern. This is based off of the AR-180 that came out a really long time ago. Now I don't know all the history about this, but they modernized it. Couple things that are awesome about this. If you notice this bolt carrier group, yeah, it doesn't require a buffer. It's all in the upper receiver, which we will do a full like review of this later. I'm just kind of going over the parts. Kind of cool, side charging and it's all encased into this upper. So essentially what that means is we can take one of these braces that a lot of people like to put on the SIG MPX or the SIG MCX, and we can actually attach it to a standard AR-15 lower receiver with an adapter. But I don't wanna spoil the surprise for all the parts. I, I kinda wanna keep a little bit of suspense going with this build. However, if you are looking for a build list of the parts that we've talked about so far, I will link all of these down below. Everything that we're using in this build for the gun parts. 
So with that said, let's go check out the Civic Type R. I'm gonna show you guys kind of a couple of mods that I kind of got impatient and went ahead and did. And then we're gonna talk about what the goals are for the car and how we're gonna kind of make it all fit together into one cohesive unit. All right guys, so here it is. Honda Civic Type R 2019. I've already done a couple mods to it, which we're gonna talk about in a later video, like these headlight overlays that are on it, fog light overlays. Got a couple other little things that we'll talk about. And we're gonna talk about, you know, what kind of mods and stuff we have coming up. So right here, I got my radar detector because, well, I've never had a radar detector before, but I kind of assumed that I probably should because as you'll see in a minute, this car is really hard to drive slow. I did install this uh, acuity shift knob, which actually reduces the height by about a couple of inches here. I think the original shift knob was somewhere like up in here which is pretty cool. Um, I like that because of the way that this armrest is set, I like to have my arm sitting flat, you know, as I shift and stuff like that. And I also got Acuity Shifter bushings, which we will have a complete review on later. Interesting thing about this car, it's kind of one of those things that I, I kind of like it, but I also don't like it, is you have an emergency parking brake right here. Now, the cool thing is, is if your seatbelt's on, you could just drive right through it. If your seatbelt's off, you can't drive right through it. Right here, we can select our comfort mode, sport mode, or plus R mode, and you can see it change on the dash. There's a drastic difference between R mode and comfort mode. Comfort mode is really good, and sport mode doesn't shake your teeth out of your head either, but it's also really good. But let's stop talking, and we'll just uh, go for a drive. Let me show you how you just drive right through this. See how it just disabled? Pretty cool. Let me do a Yui. We're out here in the streets of Mexico right now. So I figured we'd do a couple of pulls. You could probably hear all the rocks kicking up on the rocker panels. That's because of the wheels and tires that are on it. They're so sticky that all that gets kicked up. So before we really get going in this video, I really wanted to talk about if this video is actually being sponsored by anybody yes and no the main sponsor of this series is myself brownells donated the gun parts there's no money being donated i do have affiliate links for brownells but you know so if there is parts you want to buy i always put a build list in the description so you guys can buy from that if you so choose and that's how this channel stays going ets group did put forth a little bit of money to help us with this build um, the money that they put forward is what helped me pay for the hood that's going on to this car. The other sponsors for this um, video is Vivid Racing. Vivid Racing definitely got me a lot of great deals on products and parts and modifications for this car. However, none of them were free of charge. Uh, with that said though, they are allowing us to use their garage to do install videos and to so I can film it while other people install it because you can't really film while you install stuff. So they're gonna be donating their time and their energy and their efforts to help us install the parts as, as well as let us use their shop, which is absolutely amazing. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to everybody who helped me get this uh, build series off the ground. All right, so let's take this through the canyon right here. It's not a big canyon, but let's have some fun. And that whoosh sound from the turbo that you're hearing is not a blow-off valve. That is actually the intake that I have on the car right now, which is an AFE Takeda cold air intake. I'm gonna do a lot more testing and evaluation with it, but so far, I like it. So you're probably wondering at this point, dude, why did you get a Honda? The interesting thing I've noticed about this car is most people look at it and they just can't get past the fact that it's a Honda. And you know what, to be really honest with you guys, I didn't want to buy a Honda. I was going to buy something different. Uh, my last car was a 2009 Honda Civic Si, and I was a little bit burned out on front wheel drive and I was burned out on Hondas in general. One night I was out on a date night with my wife and we decided, hey, let's go dream a little and look at cars that we would like to buy 
And I said to myself, hey, let's go see if they got a new Corvette C8 or uh, let's go to the Toyota dealership, see if one of the new Supras is there. And you know, lo and behold, none of those cars were there, but there was a used Civic Type R in the Asian blue color. And so I asked to test drive it and wow, I was, completely surprised it barely felt like a front wheel drive and i wasn't gonna buy it i really wasn't i was like wow that was a lot of fun i'd like to have one of those one day then i kind of thought about it for about a week or so called my cpa and said hey can we make this work out on paper you know as a business expense to do a build series with and you know don't take this as a tax advice ask your own cpa but he called he called me back he's like yep we can make that happen i was going to go buy the used type r that i had test driven However, they wanted $36,900 for it and it had 5,000 miles. Had a couple of rock chips and one of the wheels were curved. What the crazy part is, they were charging MSRP for a used car. And I started looking online like why that was. They did not want to haggle on the price at all, not even a dollar. So I started looking around and found out, wow, these cars are holding their value like crazy. Maybe I should, you know, look into this and found out the dealerships that were selling the new Type R were upcharging anywhere from three to ten thousand dollars over MSRP. So I decided to call the Honda dealership that was local to me, find out what they're charging for their Type R, and I paid MSRP, not a dollar more. This car was only seven hundred dollars more than the used car. The number one reason I bought this car is because of the price and the price of the mods that we can do to this car. Now this car comes with 306 horsepower, 295 foot pound feet of torque from the factory. That's not at the wheels. I believe at the wheels, they're dynoing anywhere from 260 to 275, depending on the dyno that's used. We should be able to push it to close to 400 horsepower on the stock motor, you know, before we have to start changing out rods and pistons. And I don't know exactly the way that I'm gonna go in this car. I don't really wanna make it a 100% track car, but at the same time, I kind of want it to be just a fun street car that I can enjoy and drive. I went and test drove, you know, the new STIs. I didn't test drive the Focus RS and I didn't test drive any Evos because, well, they're not made anymore. And I didn't want someone else's car that they beat the crap out of if I'm gonna modify something. I wanted something that's gonna be reliable, which is my second reason for buying this car. Hondas are typically 100% reliable. This car does have two issues, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, but I know Hondas inside and out. I'm very familiar with them. Now, the third reason I bought this car is it is way more powerful than it than I thought it would be. And don't let the spec sheet fool you. You know, the zero to 60 time, I think it's 5.7 seconds, something like that. And the only reason that this car is zero to 60 time is 5.7 and not like four and a half seconds is because it's not all wheel drive. However, there are tuning modules that can actually make it simulate all wheel drive. And I actually have one of those tuning modules on here right now. To kind of give you an example, I'm not gonna launch this car because I don't like launching cars, but I'm gonna be in second gear at 34, 33 miles an hour, and I'm gonna punch it. That's why I bought this car tuning modules. From the factory, it might not be the best car ever. Let's just be honest, it's not the best car ever. It does have the Nürburgring record of seven minutes, 43 seconds in regards to front wheel drive cars. But what's interesting about that is that lap time is actually faster than the 2004 Lamborghini Superleggera and uh, the 996 Porsche GT3 RS. Keep that in mind. There's other cars that it beat um, that were supercars. I mean, yeah, they were 10 years old, but you get the point on how fast this car can be. And when you're driving around in this car, except for the big Honda badge on the steering wheel, you don't really feel like you're in a Honda. And I've heard a few people say that. Some people have said, well, it still feels like a Honda. Well, it feels like a sport compact car. The best way that I can describe it is it feels like a less powerful BMW M3. Hopefully when I'm done with it, it will feel just like a BMW M3 to an extent. The fourth reason I bought this car is it has zero torque steer. In my Honda Civic Si that I have, my 2009, I mean, I, I remember one time way back when I was going around a curve pretty quick and it really suffered from tremendous understeer and torque steer. But I remember going through a curve and I was trying to punch it around the corner and I couldn't figure out why the heck my car wasn't turning. It just wanted to go straight 
and the wheel would get jerked around like crazy. But in this one, I mean, we are on a bumpy road, but watch. No hands. Now, I did mention earlier, I wanted to talk about two issues that this car kind of been become known for. Number one is the second gear grind. And this is nothing new to Honda. My eighth generation 2009 Civic Si, that generation suffered from it as well. Now that the eighth generation Civic Si's came out in 2006, I bought one in 2009. Thankfully, not all of the 2009 models were affected and mine grinded maybe twice in my entire experience with it. Right now, I have 960 miles on this car and I've experienced the second gear grind once and it was when I was trying to test it and launch it. Um, I know for a fact that my foot was not all the way to the floor when I shifted. Now, the cool thing is a lot of people that have had the second gear grind, even though they've modded their cars with upgraded bolt-ons and tuners, Honda has not voided the warranty on the transmission. They have been fixing it according to the forums, but if this car does eventually develop a consistent grind, I'll have it fixed. The second problem that this car has is when people track it, it tends to overheat. So because I live in Arizona where it gets to be 115 degrees in the summertime, we're most definitely gonna be focusing on cooling mods and power mods in regards to the drivetrain of this car. Well, one of the first mods we're gonna be doing is paint protection. So I reached out to a company called Expel. You may have heard of them. Um, they're pretty much known for the best paint protection films from anybody. Cool part is, is if it's installed by an authorized Expel dealer or installer, they will warranty it. I believe it's for 10 years. Don't quote me on that, but we're gonna have a full video about that installation process. And we're gonna have a full video on like a review of it in the coming future after I've had it for a while. And this car definitely needs paint protection because it's Honda paint. After looking at my 10 year old 2009 Civic Si, after it's been pelted with rocks, this car is definitely gonna need that, especially because it has the wide body kit on this car. Those rear rocker panels just get pelted with rocks from the sticky tires that are on here. Which brings me to more of the mods. Another one of the first mods we're gonna do is wheels, tires, and lowering springs. We're gonna be dropping this car about an inch or an inch and a half. Now, when you look at this car with the factory wheels on it, it doesn't really look like it needs to be dropped. Problem is, Honda decided to put 20 inch wheels on it with very low profile tires. Problem with that is, if you hit a pothole, your wheel is now ruined. I did buy the wheel insurance on here, so it doesn't matter if I hit a pothole, scratch it, whatever, Honda will replace or fix the wheels free of charge. I got that, but at the same time, I wanted the more I wanted more sidewall. So we're gonna go with some 18 inch by nine and a half inch wide tires. The current tires that are on it are 20 inch by eight and a half. So that's gonna be an interesting video, but I'm not gonna spoil the surprise because the, top, the wheels that we bought for this car were actually designed specifically for the Civic Type R so it doesn't reintroduce the torque steer. The next mod, tuning modules, guys. Holy cow, tuning modules. We gotta have those. The ECU in the Honda Civic Type R is completely different than any other Honda ECU. It's actually using a Bosch ECU, which is what a lot of our German cars use. The downside to that is it's a target-based ECU. So it has like different torque targets that it goes for. So it doesn't matter if you mod the crap out of this car, the ECU will always learn a way around the mods and therefore they won't add any power to it. Definitely the first power mod has to be the tuning module. Currently two mo tuning modules for this car. We got K-Tuner, we got Han Data. I bought both. Whenever you talk about which one's better, people get their panties all twisted, and I wanted to find out for myself because that's just how I roll. After that, we're gonna go full bolt-ons from the downpipe all the way back. We're gonna do the cold air intake. I actually have the Takeda AFE intake on there right now, which I have an install video for. It may or may not be published at this point in time. So if it is published, I'll put a link down below so you can go check it out. But either way, guys, I'm super excited to do this build series. I just really wanted to get this video out. I've been putting it off too long, and it seems like something keeps coming up that prevents us from getting this video out. So this video isn't exactly everything I wanted it to be. I wanted there to be a whole lot more cinematics. But man, just finding the time and finding the right people to fly drones while you drive a car, it's just, it's really complicated, but I'm working on that. 
But in the next video, we're gonna be building the lower receiver on the bufferless AR-15. And I can't wait to do that because there's a lot of interesting stuff that's going on with it. Then a the video after that, we're gonna be doing the upper and then we're gonna start going into all the nitty gritty of the reviews. We're gonna build the car. I mean, it's gonna be a fun series and I'm just thankful that you guys are here with me to kind of join me in this process and I can share it with you. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.